off at number 10 is an abandoned carnival. Now, I have always known carnivals to be very upbeat and happy places, but I think it's safe to say after toxic radiation, they ain't so fun. Just a mile and a quarter away from the Chernobyl power plant is the small town of Pripyat. Pripyat was the town where most workers at Chernobyl lived and raised their families prior to the famous blast. Obviously, that is not the case anymore. What is now left of this once popular carnival is a decaying ferris wheel, bumper cars surrounded by overgrown vines, and an old rusty skeleton of a merry-go-round. It is said that the amusement park was set to open on May 1st, just five days after the Chernobyl incident occurred, but the people of Pripyat needed something to do while the reactor was melting down, so the town opened up the amusement park on April 27th. How charming. Nothing more sweet and fun than you and your family enjoying a beautiful Ferris wheel ride that sweeps in and out of toxic radiation. Ah, uh, it's the little things in life. In our ninth spot, we have the radioactive animals. And if you guys are liking this video so far, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up. The nuclear power plant explosion had a lasting effect on the animals in the area. First off, families had to flee their home and leave their pets behind. As a result, a number of stray dogs that are descendants of those dogs still roam the area. But it's not safe to pet them, no matter how cute they are. And sadly, because of their exposure to the radiation, they don't live a long life. And many of them have health issues. Another animal that is highly radioactive there are the boars. This is because they eat grubs, tubers, and roots in the soil where the radioactive isotopes have settled. Not only that, but birds and rodents have been found with tumors and cataracts, all from being exposed to the radiation in the area. Coming in at number eight, we have the creepy doll beds. There are a bunch of people who go around Chernobyl purposely trying to make it creepier. They have been given the name the disaster tourists. They have been known to take creepy old dolls and place them on windowsills or hang them from buildings, etc. They also did this really creepy thing in an abandoned school. They rearranged a kindergarten classroom and placed a doll on every single one of those dilapidated beds. That literally looks like something straight out of a horror movie. Seriously, out of all the abandoned places there, that one looks like it would for sure be haunted. In our seventh spot today, we have the ghostly figure. There are tons of ghosts that haunt Chernobyl. I mean, any place where a huge tragedy takes place is bound to be haunted. In this case, the ghost was captured on live TV. So sci-fi channel's Destination Truth went to Chernobyl and conducted a number of paranormal investigations. They even went to Reactor 4. While there, they saw a human figure appear on a thermal imaging camera. They believe that that is the soul of a worker that died from the explosion. They also checked out a number of abandoned hospitals and saw multiple figures moving throughout the hospital on the thermal imaging camera camera as well. Isn't that spooky? Moving on to number six, we have the elephant's foot. The elephant's foot is a large mass of black choria. It's given the name the elephant's foot because it's shaped sort of like an elephant's foot. Now, this thing is highly deadly. It emits high levels of radiation. Anyone exposed to it for minutes could die from radiation poisoning. And guess what? Although it's not as active as it was back in the day, it is still generating heat and still melting down into the base of Chernobyl. The scariest part, if it comes in contact with water, another explosion could occur. Now, eventually the elephant's foot will cool on its own, but even then it will still remain highly radioactive and no one should ever go near it. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the raccoon dog. This is a really freaking weird animal found in Chernobyl. When people first saw it, they actually thought Thought the radiation caused a dog and a raccoon to just fuse together. Basically, they are found all throughout the exclusion zone and they are thriving there. It's crazy to see how they have adapted to live in a highly radioactive area. Now, these things are freaking cute. In fact, they are the most observed animals in that area by scientists. Coming in at number four, we have the fire bugs. These are tiny but deadly radioactive bugs. They were discovered back in 2011 when two friends were out collecting flowers in the exclusion zone. Don't worry, they were doing this for scientific reasons, you know, to study the pollen, not to just create a deadly radioactive bouquet of flowers. Hours. Anyways, while doing so, they came across these fire bugs. They then went around collecting hundreds of these bugs, some from areas with higher levels of radiation and some from areas with lower radiation levels. In the end, they found that those exposed to higher levels of radiation had deformities. I mean, 
yeah, just as you suspected. Either way, you don't want those bad boys crawling on your skin for a number of reasons. In our third spot today, we have the mutated wolves. The wolves from Chernobyl are another animal that are most commonly studied by scientists. In fact, some have been tagged with GPS collars to help track the levels of radioactivity there. Here's the thing. There was this whole scary legend going around that the wolves living there got mutated and were now highly aggressive and massive in size. There were stories being told of these massive wolves hunting down humans and attacking any and every animal. Turns out that this was false. But here's something interesting. Scientists believe that the wolves there have been mating with the dogs there. And in the end, they are creating these large dogs that look like wolves. It's pretty interesting. I, I want a wolf dog. Another interesting interesting thing is that research has shown that the radiation isn't really affecting them. In fact, the wolf population is thriving there. As a result, they have concluded that humans have a greater negative impact on animals' lives than radiation does. Isn't that insane? It is said that there are around 300 wolves living in the exclusion zone. But again, like all the animals mentioned on this list, they are highly radioactive and dangerous to get close to or even pet. Coming in at number two, we have the tomb. This is one of the saddest things at Chernobyl. But basically, a number of individuals that got exposed to the radioactive materials and died had to be buried in basically a big concrete coffin. Let's take a look at a man named Vasily Ignatenko. On that day, he went to the roof of the power plant to extinguish the fires. Sadly, he was exposed to a lethal dose of radiation and passed away. He was only 25. Now, his body was still radioactive. So Vasily, along with 27 other firefighters, were buried under big amounts of zinc and concrete. They did this to protect the public from the radiation emitting from their bodies. They were buried all around the reactor. It's really sad sad that they didn't really get a proper burial. I mean, they couldn't. It was too dangerous to go near their bodies. And in our number one spot today, we have the Blackbird of Chernobyl. According to some survivors of this accident, they claim that shortly before the nuclear plant meltdown, they all experienced nightmares. They also received threatening phone calls and had encountered a huge winged bird creature. Legend goes that these were all warning signs that the disaster was going to happen. The creature they saw was a large creature like a man with huge wings and red eyes. Some even claim they saw it over one of the reactors as it went through the meltdown. This creature has been given the name the Black Bird of Chernobyl. So legend goes, if you were in Chernobyl and you see this creature, then something bad is going to happen. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have cows. Cows are one of the sweetest and cutest animals out there and it totally makes sense why people call them grass puppies. The area around Chernobyl was known for its agriculture before the disaster, so of course that means there were definitely a lot of cows that could be found. Since farm animals are not only expensive, but can also be used as a source of income, many people took their farm animals with them, but many of these animals had already been exposed to the radiation in some capacity, and while it didn't affect them right away, the newer generations saw much more of the effects. In 1989, many farmers began reporting birth defects in their animals, some being much more severe than others. As time went on, the cows became less mutated, but that doesn't mean the effects went away. As the cows continued to graze on feed that was contaminated, the effects became more internal. This has led completely normal looking cows near the exclusion zone to be begin producing milk that is toxic and not fit for consumption. This is just one of the clear examples of how even though the visible effects may have worn off, there are still lasting effects that we probably hadn't previously considered. In our ninth spot today, we have the ghosts. A number of people lost their lives over this terrible disaster, and it's believed that their souls are still around, haunting Pripyat. This one story in particular will give you the chills. It was told by nuclear physicist Andrei Karsukov. He visited the area in 1997 and claims he encountered a ghost. So when he arrived, he went to the power station and went to the number four reactor. That's where the explosion occurred. Now, he was there taking radiation readings when all of a sudden he heard someone screaming for rescue from a fire coming from inside. He said that it was impossible for someone to be inside of the old reactor room. For starters, the door requires a password and a handprint. And not only that, it would have tripped an alarm if someone managed to get inside. Yet, the screaming was clearly coming from inside. It sounded like someone was desperately trying to escape. So he might have heard the ghostly cries from someone who lost their life in the power plant explosion. Isn't that scary? 
I think so. Number eight, silhouettes of missing townspeople. Before I go any further on this one, let me just say that these silhouettes are not actually of real people left after the blast. A couple of sneaky and daring graffiti artists said to be from Germany and Belarus snuck into the radiation zone and thought it would be a good idea to spray paint silhouettes of people who once lived in this beautiful little community. So these pieces more or less resemble what once was rather than resembling actual humans from the town. That being said, there are some unique silhouettes through the radiation zone such as a little girl with pigtails reaching for a light switch in a random abandoned room. Somewhere outside, a boy pulling a truck towards a corner of the building as well as silhouettes of random people dancing and to finish it off, a small group of children jumping together in terror of the blast. Pretty morbid, if you ask me. Whether these silhouettes are based on specific real people or not, these random silhouettes are definitely a haunting thing to see, and I don't want to see them. Coming in at number seven, we have the Bloody Red. The Bloody Red, or the Red Forest, is the name given to the forest area around Chernobyl. Why is it called that? Well, this area received a lot of radiation fallout. As a result, the trees turned this bright orange color and then died. Nowadays, not a single tree can grow there anymore. In fact, this area is considered the most radioactive land area on the planet. Yes, on the planet. Obviously, as a result, the 400 hectares of land are off limits. It's strictly prohibited to go in there. I mean, duh, unless you have a death wish and want to die from exposure to radiation. What's also scary is that in 2015, a fire broke out in the forest, and even more radioactive material was released from this burning. So yeah, that forest is a big no-go zone. Also, could they have given it a creepier name, like the Bloody Red? Really? Really? Coming in at number six are piles of creepy dolls. Creepy dolls. I have seen plenty of horror films in my time, and nothing creeps me out more than a creepy, probably possessed, old doll. All through Pripyat, piles of dolls and doll heads can be seen in the randomest of places. Everywhere from windowsills, piles of debris, bed frames, tree branches, literally everywhere. Now, some of these dolls may be left over from the blast, but odds are they are all placed there by cheeky horror fans wanting to place their own touch on the Chernobyl site. Some of these are even propped up in specific poses with gas masks on. Annabelle, if you're watching this, you stay in your glass box. You got that? We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Hospital of Death. This is said to be the deadliest hospital on the planet. So after the nuclear disaster, this hospital began quickly filling up with a number of sick and injured citizens. Nowadays though, obviously the hospital is abandoned. But the basement of the hospital contains a dark secret. In the basement, there are piles of first responders clothing. These clothings belong to the first responders like the firemen who were on the scene immediately after the explosion. Obviously, the clothing they wore when they rushed into the building is now highly contaminated and still to this day emit dangerously high levels of radiation. So they were just dumped in the basement because they didn't know where else to get rid of it. In fact, the radiation in this building is 4,000 times higher than normal. It's crazy. Number four, radiation eating fungus. In the words of Jeff Goldblum, life uh, finds a way. Currently, there is a fungus growing inside the damaged fourth reactor of Chernobyl where radiation levels are still insanely high. Discovered by scientists back in 2002, this fungus, when tested, showed that when exposed to higher ionizing radiation, it would actually grow faster. What happened to the tested fungus after? <laughs> Who knows? Either way, I do wish I could have been there to test it with the other scientists because I hear they were some pretty fun guys. <laughs> I'll show myself out. In our third spot today, we have the mutated animals. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster had devastating, lasting effects. The nuclear material leaked into the soil, contaminating food and water. In fact, the radioactive materials leaked into pastures and was eaten by cows, and then was later found in their milk that children were drinking. But let's talk more about these farm animals that were affected. There were tons of weird mutated animals born near the disaster zone after this incident. Pigs, goats, and horses were born with messed up faces and extra limbs, or were just weird colors. Nowadays, there's a lot of stray dogs that roam the area. Sadly, because of their exposure to the radiation, they don't live a long life. And they may have a number of health issues. Coming in at number two is quite possibly the strangest but most obvious thing you will find in all of Chernobyl. Tourists! 
Apparently, around 12,000 tourists visit the exclusion zone every single year. One tourism company promises 11 hours of excitement with a respirator and a dosimeter included. There are even some nearby hotels that request you leave your radioactive shoes outside and don't bring them into the hotel with you once you return. No matter how safe or unsafe you think it is to visit the exclusion zone, quite obviously thousands of people from around the world go and visit every single year. Honestly, it does seem kind of cool and I'm sure there's a gift shop somewhere that sells shirts that say, I went all the way to Chernobyl and all I got was this shirt and an extra thumb. I'd buy that. Hey, Lindsay, you want to go to Chernobyl with me? No. Okay. <laughs> and in our number one spot today, we have the Stalkers. This is absolutely insane. I don't think you guys are ready for this one. But the Stalkers is the name given to a group of Russians and Ukrainians that romanticize the apocalyptic environment of Pripyat. They sneak into abandoned buildings and explore them. Sometimes they even sleep over there. Also, to make matters weirder, they bring a gauger counter to see how much radiation they were exposed to on their journeys. Not only that, but apparently they also like to eat the fruit that grows in the danger zone. Like this is their definition of fun and they just love it. I highly, highly, highly recommend you don't do this, you know, for a number of obvious reasons. But like I said, the stalkers love this. Starting off this countdown, we have the residents. Believe it or not, but there are people that still live in Chernobyl, even though it's highly dangerous to do so. It's estimated that there are around 130 to 150 people currently living there. Many of them are older women. In fact, they have been given the name Chernobyl's Babushkas. Now, you may be wondering, how do they live there when there's no operating grocery store and stuff like that? Well, they live off of the land. They are still farming their family family's land. The thing is, the water and soil there is still highly contaminated. So why would they take this risk? Well, one of the elderly ladies featured in a documentary about Chernobyl's babushkas said, and I quote, radiation doesn't scare me, starvation does. After the nuclear disasters, these ladies fled their home, but over the years they have all come back. Despite there being no hospitals or grocery stores, they don't care. They just want to be on their homeland. And turns out their bodies have somewhat adjusted to the high levels of radiation there. In our number nine spot today, we have barn swallows. Any animal who lives in the exclusion zone have been affected by the disaster, and that includes those who spend most of their time in the sky. I'm obviously talking about birds. The barn swallows in Chernobyl are one animal who have seen a change in their physical appearance that has lasted all of the years since the nuclear meltdown. It is unclear why these birds have been affected greater than their land animal counterparts, or if these changes will ever reverse to their previous state, but here's what they are currently dealing with. The swallows appear to have severely deformed beaks, disproportionate feathers, some had partial albinism, and they were seen to have much smaller brains. Of course, some of these issues are much worse than others, and I'm sure these changes have significantly affected their ways of life, but of course they continue to adapt as time goes on. It is sad that this human-made disaster has affected them in such a negative way, but the fact that they are still around really shows their adaptability and resilience. In our number 8 spot today, we have boars. Boars are often seen wandering around the exclusion zone, but they also make their way into the surrounding towns as well, which is creating quite a problem. Boars are a fairly common food source and it's not unusual to come across one, but here's the problem if you live in the area, how are you supposed to tell which boars are radioactive and which aren't? Basically, you can't until it's too late. The boars who aren't radioactive might come across and intermingle with one who is, but they also like to eat mushrooms and if they're searching for their food within the exclusion zone, it's a highly likely possibility that they'll find themselves eating a radioactive mushroom. This is posing quite a problem. In 2017, there was a study that found that approximately one out of every three boars that were killed in the nearby areas of Germany, which for the record isn't even that close to Chernobyl, have been found to be radioactive and super unsafe for human consumption. You'd think that being that far away would make you safe, but as we clearly now know, the effects of the disaster stretched far and wide. In our number seven spot today, we have Shavalsky's Horse. These horses first originated in Mongolia and were wild horses that became endangered. They first became endangered due to hunters who would often kill the stallion, which of course would provide many difficulties in terms of reproduction. These horses
horses weren't doing well in captivity, which made things even more difficult. This combined with the harsh winters, which would often claim their lives, left things looking quite grim for this species. In the late 1990s, however, in an effort to help repopulate these animals, 30 of them were released into the Ukrainian side of the exclusion zone, and it is believed that some of these original horses are actually still alive today, which is amazing, but camera trap images have also shown young horses, which means that they are repopulating, which is a huge win. Their expanding population in such a harsh environment could mean that they might potentially be able to return from the brink and go on to continue as a species, which is something we always want to see. In our number six spot today, we have cats. In the rush of the evacuation, many pets were left behind in Chernobyl, and that of course includes cats. With little to do and of course more kittens being born, this paved the way for a group of feral cats to take over the exclusion zone. These cats wander in and out of the zone and find all of their favorite snacks, such as radioactive rodents or the less common radioactive insects. These cats certainly have had quite a difficult time surviving as they are a perfect tasty snack for much larger predators and are certainly not equipped to deal with the harsh winters, but even still, there is said to be at least a hundred stray cats living in the exclusion zone. There are efforts underway to have the uncontaminated ones put up for adoption, but the difficulty is in testing them and also re-domesticating these animals who have had to fend for themselves for so long. In our number five spot today, we have dogs. Since we just talked about the cats who were sadly left behind, it's only fair we talk about the dogs too. It's strange that these two domesticated animals would have such different experiences after the disaster, but they absolutely have. There are far more dogs who have managed to survive throughout the years than cats, but that is most likely due to the fact that they aren't as easy to catch and eat as prey as cats are. But dogs have a whole other challenge, and that is they have a hard time hunting and feeding themselves. There are workers who continue to work the dangerous job at the plant, and they continually feed the dogs living in the zone, which is something that truthfully is so nice to hear. It is also said that there are dogs living in this area that have begun mating with wolves, which is only going to breed dogs that will be more likely to be able to survive on their own, which I suppose is a good thing. Similar to the cats, many of the stray dogs are being studied to see if they can be adopted into homes outside of the zone so that they don't have to continue living in these harsh environments that they really were not bred for. In our number four spot today, we have European gray wolves. One of the species of animals that has been thriving ever since the disastrous nuclear meltdown has been the European gray wolf. Due to the lack of humans in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, they have been able to thrive, and it has been said that the wolves in this area actually have a population that is seven times higher than that of comparable sites. Researchers are still trying to figure out exactly why this is happening, but it has obviously shown them that despite the effects of radiation in humans, the radiation clearly isn't affecting the wildlife's ability to reproduce. So this seems like just a regular gray wolf, but here's where things get a little different. Just because the wolves seem to be doing fine doesn't mean they aren't radioactive. These wolves, since they're such a high population, population are beginning to travel farther and spread out more, which creates quite a problem. Not that we're just going up and petting wolves, but if you did come in contact with one of these wolves, you'd be getting a high dose of radiation just by touching them. Touching a carcass of these wolves with bare hands is absolutely not recommended. So while it is absolutely incredible to see the wildlife doing so well in this zone, we are now faced with an entirely different issue that we haven't really ever had before. In our number three spot today, we have the Eurasian lynx. This one is on this list for a different reason than most. It isn't because of anything this animal is or isn't doing, but instead is due to the fact that this animal was once believed to have entirely disappeared from Europe. It was fairly recently in 2014 that researchers realized they had made a comeback in a big way. Similar to most of the animals we've talked about today, the Eurasian lynx has been able to thrive due to the lack of human population and interference. Their downfall was attributed to urbanization as well as hunters, and they were mostly wiped out in the early 20th century, although they remained in certain parts of Siberia. There is still a lot more research that needs to be done about these creatures to determine exactly how radioactive they are, and this will take time due to the dangers of the zone they reside in, as well as the nature of these creatures in general. But just being able to see that an animal that was struggling has been able to make such a comeback is probably one of the best things to come out of such a horrible disaster. In our number two spot today, we have bison. Bison are right up there with wolves for most dangerous dangerous radioactive animal, and that is due to their size, as well as the fact that they are a source of food for some. These huge animals can weigh up to 2,200 pounds and are certainly not an animal that is easily messed with. Many bison weren't affected by the radiation immediately, and instead it became much more of an issue once 
once they started eating food that had been contaminated. They like to feed on grass and a lot of it, and the radiation didn't only affect animal life but plant life as well, making their food source a literal feeding ground for radioactive material. Similar to the wolves we talked about before, running into these guys isn't only a threat now because of their size, but now because if you get too close, you could be facing some unsafe levels of radiation. In our number one spot today, we have spiders. I've talked about my hatred for spiders a lot on this channel, but to be honest, they keep doing cool things, so I have to keep talking about them. Okay, well maybe this one is less cool and more scary, but still, they deserved a spot. Spiders that are residing within the exclusion zone are of course radioactive, but it's not only the spiders that are now dangerous to touch, but it is also their webs. Spiders in Chernobyl are literally making radioactive webs, which is the stuff straight out of a comic book. These radioactive webs are also being woven in much different ways than they were before, which would suggest some sort of genetic mutation at play. Spiders were already a creature I'd like to stay far, far away from, but radioactive spiders really adds a whole other level. Not only are the spiders now dangerous for non-radioactive animals to touch, but walking through their web is equally as dangerous to those who aren't thriving in the radiation. So not only do you have to watch out for the regular old radioactive material, but now also the never-ending construction of radioactive webs. Great. 